Art galleries are among our most cherished institutions, housing some of the world's most prized possessions. The general rule is look, don't touch. Not anymore. Around the world, attacking high-profile art has become the latest trend in climate protest. Throwing mashed potato at a Monet or tomato soup at a Van Gogh are eye-catching stunts, but whether they do anything to further the cause of climate change is debatable. What is worth more, art or life? It's an attack on the objects and artworks that we hold in trust. Any regrets? Not at all, no. 100% stand by my actions. I think the problem with this sort of activism is that it's a, a race to the bottom. What McCubbin and others were doing was trying to show the beauty of the bush, to try to show that this was precious and needed to be protected. Darren McCubbin is the great-grandson of one of Australia's pioneering impressionist artists. Frederick McCubbin was one of the iconic Australian painters and himself with Roberts and others came here to an artist camp here in Box Hill and painted some of the most incredible Australian paintings. The McCubbin classic titled Down on His Luck is a recent target of the art vandalism trend. The protester spray-painted a Woodside logo on the protective plastic covering the painting to draw attention to concerns about the impact of industrial emissions on both the climate and ancient rock art. Some of McCubbin's descendants threw their support behind the activists, saying this protest is in line with the McCubbin family's legacy of using art to comment on environmental issues. But Darren McCubbin, a self-described environmental activist and CEO of the Gippsland Climate Change Network, disagrees. I don't believe this is the right action to be able to influence a generation. In fact, most people would look at it as being trivial and silly. Joanna Partica was the activist behind the protest. She's a staffer for WA Green Senator Jordan Steelejohn and also an artist herself. A big part of the decision was because we knew it was protected by plexiglass. Um, there was never any intention to permanently damage it or to damage it at all. Was there any chance something could have gone wrong and it could have actually been damaged? Um, I, I suppose there's no way to rule that out completely. It's not a decision I made lightly. The destruction of artwork, whether it be behind Perspex or not, is a terrible thing. It also stops the general community from enjoying the artwork because you have to put Perspex in front of it, barriers and other protective um, things in front of these artwork. They need to be enjoyed by the community, not be surrounded by protective measures because some activist is going to make a statement. If we're going to make a statement, get out there and talk to people and do positive actions on the ground. Let's not worry about getting photographed in front of a despoiled artwork. It's certainly designed to, to grab attention. Um, to, to draw people into the issue and to, to see the action and then consider why someone may feel compelled to do this. Dramatic, sensationalist things get attention. That's what the media is looking for. What would be the benefit of offending people as part of trying to get them on board? In order to bring people on the journey, we need to uh, almost you know, shake them from their slumber. It has shaken the international arts community. We're meant to be custodians of these pieces for, for as long as possible. So it's a challenging thing that's been going on at the moment. Alex Marsden represents the Australian wing of the International Council of Museums, which issued a warning to activists across the globe that their actions are putting irreplaceable works in danger. So increasingly vigilant, that will be an increase in security services and a diminution of uh, ways in which people can interact with art. And that, that is happening to some extent around the world. This expansive outdoor art gallery is the battleground for the climate activist group behind the WA art gallery attack. 
The Murujuga cultural landscape is home to one of the world's largest collections of rock art, dating back 50,000 years. It's just been nominated for World Heritage Inscription. The million petroglyphs that we have here, over a million of them, um, you know, the rock art that we have um, depicted on this, you know, carved into this, the manda, you know, the rocks, they tell our story. Murujuga includes the Burrup Peninsula, which is also home to Woodside's Gas Hub and Yarra Pilbara's fertiliser plant. There's been decades of disagreement over whether industry can safely coexist with the precious engravings. Traditional custodian Raylene Cooper is adamant industrial pollution is damaging them. They've put a, you know, a Woodside logo on a hundred-year-old painting. Well, people, I'm sorry. Um, please look around us. Look around us here in the Burrup Peninsula. Woodside told 7.30 studies on the impacts of emissions on rock art have not been conclusive and that it takes its responsibility to protect cultural heritage seriously. Teams of scientists are currently working to assess the risks. In the meantime, the Murujuga Aboriginal Corporation is leading a scientific effort to monitor the carvings. There's a rock art monitoring strategy and, and, and we and we you know putting a little bit of rigour around how we collect the data now to 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 come to the point where, where we can say for sure whether or not the emissions is affecting the art. Activist Joanna Partica now has a conviction for criminal damage and a seven and a half thousand dollar fine which has already been fundraised by the activist group calling itself Disrupt Burrup Hub. Would you do it again? Uh, that's, that's a tough question. Um, I would have to think about it, but absolutely, it, it's, it's likely I'll do something like this again, for sure. This is serious, and doing look at me sort of statements by gluing yourself to pictures just isn't cutting the mustard. We need to be out there explaining it, having real conversations with real people, not doing look at me Facebook posts. We understand the impetus, but we should be allies in combating climate change, not at loggerheads.